Welcome back to the Microlearning Institute. In this tutorial, we advise Crespo how to account for their defined benefit pension plan. We're told that Crespo operates a defined benefit pension plan for employees. On the 1st of November 20x2, the fair value of the plan's asset was $9.57 million and the present value of the defined benefit obligation was $10.88 million. Crespo's annual contribution into the plan amounted to $4.26 million on the 31st of October 20x3. The plan paid out benefits of $1.65 million during the year. Employees' current service cost amounted to $3.13 million for the year. At the 31st of October 20x3, the fair value of plan assets was $13.05 million and the present value of the defined benefit obligation was $13.52 million. A discount rate of 6% is to be applied to the net defined benefit or liability. When accounting for a defined benefit pension, we must consider both what happens in the fund, which of course comprises assets and liabilities, and how the activity of the fund translates, in this case, to the income statement of the company, Crespo. Firstly, brought forward in November 2012, we have assets and liabilities as given to us in the question. The expected return on the plan assets is 6%, so 6% of the opening plan assets of 9.57 million is $570,000, and this expected return is treated as a deduction of the expense recognised in the income statement in the period. The interest, which reflects the moving forward in time closer to the payment of the liabilities, again is recognised at 6% with respect to the opening liabilities of $10.88 million. So the interest expense increases the liabilities of the fund and also is recognised in the period in the income statement. The current service cost, which is essentially the cost of the current service of the employees in relation to the increase in their pension liabilities, is recognised as an increase in the liabilities of the fund and also as an expense to the income statement. The cash that the company introduced to the fund adds to the assets of the fund. However, this cash has no impact on reported income statement activities. The benefits paid out to retired employees are both a reduction of the assets, as of course assets had to be removed from the fund in order to secure the benefits for the retired employees. Also, of course, once these benefits are secured for the retired employees, they no longer are a liability of the fund. So we see the benefits reducing both the assets and liabilities of the fund, but not having any immediate effect on the income statement. Now finally, we're told that the fair value of the plan assets and the present value of the plan liabilities were reviewed again in October 2013 and found to be 1.305 million and 1.352 million respectively. Of course, now we need to calculate the balancing figure and the balancing figure on the asset side reflects a gain on the assets on remeasurement of $300,000. Uh, however, uh, there's also a loss on the remeasurement of the liabilities of $510,000 and these two figures are calculated purely as balancing figures. And the net gain or loss, in this case it's a loss, in remeasurement is again taken to the income statement, this time to other comprehensive income. So let's see how that translates to an income statement extract and a statement of financial position extract. The net of the expected return, the interest and the current service cost is recognised as a net pension expense in profit and loss. And this, in our case, totals to 3.21 million. Additionally, the $210,000 of remeasurement loss is recognised in other comprehensive income. At the same time, on the statement of financial position, the closing net liability, that is the difference between the closing fair value of plan assets and the closing present value of plan liabilities, is recognised as a net liability on the statement of financial position. Thank you very much for watching this short tutorial from the Microlearning Institute.